Get a special treat tonight. Find out what's next for oil and gas after yesterday's horrifying crash. A few weeks ago, the price of crude was at 53 bucks. Now it's at $34, and that's after 10% bounce today. Whenever the action gets this emotional, you need to do everything you can to take emotion out of the equation. That's why tonight we thought, why not bring in Carly Garner, special guest. You've heard about her a lot of times from our show. She's our resident commodities expert, uh, co-founder of the Carly Trading, and the author of High Probability Commodity Trading. Get a technical read on the situation. Carly, welcome back to Mayo Money. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, Carly, let's go to work. I'm giving you the floor. All right. Sounds good. So, up front, full disclosure, I just want, you know, I've, I've been a broker since 2004. I've been in the commodity business for a long time. I've seen, I thought I'd seen it all almost. I learned on Sunday night when the futures markets open and crude oil just collapsed that I had not seen anything yet. So this is, uh, this is a, a rough time for the brokerage industry. It's hard to manage risk. So hopefully we can take some of the, like Jim said, some of the emotion out of it, look at the logical aspects of the markets and the charts. So let's start with, we're going to start with, uh, this is what West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil. We're looking at historical patterns. What does crude normally do this time of year? Actually, it tends to bottom this time of year. We haven't seen that yet. Seasonals are tricky. It's a rule of thumb. It's not perfect. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late. I'm hoping this year it's a little late. I haven't given up on it yet, though. Next, we're going to take a look at natural gas. The natural gas chart is similar. It tends to bottom right around in March. So natural gas is actually on time. Today we had a nice little bounce. Hopefully that continues. We'll talk about a few reasons as why I think it might continue. But so far natural gas is on schedule. I just wish it wouldn't have gotten so cheap before it started. Next chart, please. So we talk about the COT report a lot. And Jim, you talk about it a lot when you, when you do our work on your show. The COT report is basically, uh, it's issued by the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and it tells us a couple of things. It tells us where speculators are positioned and where hedgers are positioned, how long they are, how short they are. What we look for in crude oil, to be honest, crude oil specs have been net long for years and years. They rarely go short. Honestly, I think, if you remember 2007, 2008, crude oil was trading around 150 and everyone was calling for 200. I'm kind of convinced a bunch of people bought at the highs, and they've just been hanging on and rolling over. Well, so then what you're saying to me is basically there was those people bought, and maybe they capitulated? Maybe that's what blew think, them out? Well, I think a lot of that is part of it. Yeah, it just kind of the buying dries up, and then it, and then it turns around. But that would be very bullish if these people got blown out. Well, I'm talking about in 2007. When okay, prices, but I'm saying that's what might have happened here. I think right? the opposite happened here. What? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. So... 2007 prices are around 150. Everybody wants to be long, and right. they have been ever since. Honestly, they've just kind of been rolling over. Now we're looking at a situation in crude oil. We don't necessarily look at how um, whether they're long or short because they're, everyone's always right. long. We're looking at how much. So if you notice, this is last Friday's report. Okay. About 400,000 large specs were net long the market. Usually, when this figure gets down to about 300 net longs is when the market bottoms out. You saw it here. Right. You saw it here. And usually, we get a pretty good rally out of it. Okay. Now, this, you'll notice, we're looking at 400,000, but that was, those figures were before this latest okay, drop. Okay, so tell me, so, I, you know, so I get this. What yeah. are we saying right here? So what right are we saying? here, being in the brokerage industry and seeing what I saw, these people were selling because they had to. They were out of money. Okay. They had margin calls. They didn't know what else to do. But that's a capitulation that's, bottom. Absolutely. I typically want to buy a capitulation Thank you. Bottom. Yes. That's, okay. that's what I'm thinking happened. Unfortunately, the problem with speculation, whether it's stocks or commodities, it happens, unfortunately, a lot. When you get that, when everybody runs out of money and, and where, you know, they just can't take it anymore, that's usually when it turns around. All unfortunately, right. I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, that's not so bad. Next chart, please. So natural gas, we have an opposite situation. In natural gas, speculators have been net short for quite a while. They're hanging on to the largest net spec short position in the history of natural gas. I've actually been pointing this out for a couple of months. We haven't budged yet. In fact, if you're going to stop drilling, it's going to produce an opportunity for natural gas to spike because it's a byproduct. Correct. Right. That. And honestly, when it comes to this sort of stuff, these speculative markets, sometimes the fundamentals don't have to change at all. All Maybe all we need is just Everybody that's short decides it's time to get out. When they cover their position and unwind it, the market goes up. Sometimes it happens despite bearish fundamentals. Okay. You just never know. Next chart, please. I always look at the currency market when I'm looking at commodities. And the reason being, the 
dollar and crude oil or the dollar and commodities are generally inversely correlated. The last couple of weeks, it's been the opposite. They've actually been highly correlated. We're seeing dollar and crude sell off in the same manner. And it's really just because everybody's selling everything. It's okay. just one of those environments. Eventually, that'll have to change. This drop alone probably means crude oil should be in the 40s, not the 30s, just because of the, the currency differential. If the dollar continues to sell off, which I think it might, at least down to the 93 area, but I'm thinking we're looking down here, because if you think about it, the dollar's been benefiting from interest rate differentials right. with the Fed taking action last week and potentially soon mm -hmm. again. The dollar no longer has that interest rate differential, and so we okay. could easily see a further slide in the dollar, which would be very supportive for commodities. Yes. Regardless of. Well, so far you're painting a else. very bullish picture, Carly. I am. I think. I think that's where we're going. You're Next. saying it's bottomed. I you're think saying so. it's bottomed, which in yes. that case there's a lot of stocks that are really maybe not as dangerous as I've been saying. Well, you've been calling. Shoot, yeah, I've been very I mean, <laughs> let's not. Let's not. I, yeah. You've been right. I they've the been. They've the had a rough week. Now at these levels, I think they're. I think they're probably a good, attractive buy. So this is a chart. We've actually pointed this chart out a few months ago on Mad Money. We've been pointing out support at 50, support at 42, and then 26. I did not expect this. I'm not going right. to. I mean, I, I didn't that see was that. Was my, my take was that this was going to be taken out. I did not expect it to happen. It happened. Uh, I ex certainly didn't expect it to happen the way that it did. Now that we're here, there's a pretty good chance that we've probably seen the lows. My guess is we might run some more stops under here. That would put us 22, 24. Right. But in the long term, I think we're probably – Heading right back up. So. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to leave it at that, Carly. But what I'll tell you is, is that I think you made a compelling case with dollar and with nat gas and this, that we may be near or at the bottom. My only reservation is it may not reflect in the stocks because the stocks have different that, balance that sheets. That could be absolutely true. That are not going to be helped by that. That is terrific, Carly. Thank you so much. That's Carly Garner, special guest, co-founder of the Carly Trading. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.